I wanted to read out a small article which came today, uh, which was in uh, today uh, article came. Uh, uh, UN pushes for global vaccine effort, and the Bell and Melinda Gates Foundation has actually donated lot of money for the vaccine involvement. And the article says the global coronavirus death has go gone up. We face a global public enemy and no other Secretary General of uh, the United Nations. A world free of COVID-19 requires the most massive public health effort in history. The vaccine should be safe, affordable and available to all. This is what is planning being done. And as of now, the UN chief vaccine appeal came a day after US President Donald Trump prompted outcry and ridicule with all the suggestions that disinfectant may be used for the coronavirus. So dangerous experiment has been there. So since it is a new disease, so we are all working hard to get it. So vaccine will be the answer. Coming on to the next part of my presentation and that is contact tracing. Contact tracing means, uh, that means uh, this is one way which is better than social distancing. So there is a, there are various type of apps available and uh, one with which is from coming from the Arog Setu, which is from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This has done a tremendous job and I don't have further slide, but I want to explain to you how the contact tracing works. Uh, uh, how the contact tracing works. This is this. OK, so contact tracing app is working by uh, contact tracing app is working. That means if you have a app that means you download the app and this will be then somehow the technical thing is that means whenever you meet somebody else who is COVID infected, he puts the alarm in his that I got infected. Then your Android will pick up and, and will send signal that the person who said I am in COVID infected, he will send signal automatically to all the people who that person has met during last 14 days. It's very important. For example, if Mr. X gets infected, he said, OK, now I'm getting infected into his mobile because his app. So everybody who has an app and whomsoever he has come in contact during the last 14 days will get a sort of a notification that you have come in contact with Mr. X during the last 50, 14 days and therefore you have to be careful. You should quarantine yourself. Don't meet your family too much and test yourself. Do the test for yourself. So this is one way where you can have a contact tracing of the person who was infected whom you met. This is an app available on the website www contact tracing website too, and everybody should download this on their mobile for at least for the next 15 or uh, next two months. So coming to the next part of my presentation is the plasma therapy. The plasma therapy is very important and uh, what is plasma therapy is coming on newspaper every day. Let me explain to you what it is. Plasma therapy is nothing but antibodies. I told you that for any patient to survive, the, whenever the patient gets infection, the body has its own immunity. That means it will start producing antibodies against that virus antigen. What is virus? Virus is actually protein. And there have been a lot of reports telling that whether virus is a living or non-living. Actually, we have been told and we have been reading all through that virus, bacteria are a living organism. There was some people who thought that virus could be a non-living material because it does not require oxygen for its survival. But I don't agree with that. I, as a doctor, I feel I am quite sure that virus is a living animal because it's infecting the other and it's replicating. Virus can replicate and that is only living person, living body can replicate. If, although it's not requiring oxygen for its survival. Doesn't matter, it's not going to detail. So whenever you get infected by virus, the whole body is getting, the body system will produce antigen. I showed you antigen, IgG and IgM antibodies. There are a lot of diseases where we have automatically made antibodies. For example, gulen barre syndrome, where the whole half of the body gets paralyzed. It's also a virus disease. You have IgG, IgM available. If the patient comes within six hours, we'll, in, we'll inject that antibodies and the patient will recover. There's something like streptokinase, which we treat for the acute myocardial infarction. It will thrombolize the clot formed inside the heart. But for this disease, for this disease, I, COVID-19, we do not have, we do not have antibodies as of now because we have not worked that 
is we are not gone to that level of working so what is happening is we are requesting the covid 19 infective patients who are now recovered the patients who have recovered from covid 19 their blood is taken out they are donor the blood is transfused back the plasma is taken out plasma it is supposedly thought that this patient who has recovered has already adequate immunity in the form of antibodies and this, this plasma which is taken out from the body of the patient who has been infected is infused or transfused into the COVID-19 sick patient. You understand, a donor is the person who has already got infected, now recovered. Recipient is who is infected but not yet recovered and sick. This is plasma treatment. So this is antibody therapy because we don't have available antibodies. So we are trying and in Delhi we have done about five cases all over the world. It's a most important therapy. It is going to reduce the mortality drastically if it is found to be useful. It is, still it is in the clinical trial phase. What is herd immunity? This is very important. You must be reading in newspaper herd immunity. Whenever the virus comes, a new virus comes, it infects a lot of people. The body immunity, own immunity will help the patient to develop antibodies, few patients will die, few patients will not die and they will be immune enough so that when the next virus comes, for example, the seasonal flu, everybody suffers from seasonal flu. They have cough, fever and after a few days it goes off. Seven days, everybody says virus, okay, don't worry because whenever we say viral flu, we take it very casually. We don't say, we don't even need antibiotics, only symptomatic treatment, give anti-allergic, Give paracetamol, sometimes you take, give also ibuprofen to reduce the temperature, take rest, that's all, steam inhalation. But COVID-19 is a more dangerous virus. Why? I tell, I'm again telling you why it is more dangerous. It is more dangerous because, because it not only, it has the potential to infect more number of people, but it just can cause mortality of 20% in a serious patient who has low immunity, 15% on average. 10%, 7%, which is a huge number. And within few weeks, I have seen patients dying. You know, in Apollo Hospital, we could not save the patient despite the best ventilator. Why 2 lakhs people have died all over the world? Because, and those are the developed countries. Italy is developed country. France is developed country. Thousands of deaths. Because despite the best ventilator therapy, despite the best of the treatment, despite the best of the ICU, the virus will have so much of I told you, it, it disturbs the system of hemoglobin and oxygen. That means hemoglobin and oxygen, how they combine, it dissociates that. If your immunity is good enough, that means you can survive for next 10, 15 days, you will be lucky. I mean, the COVID-19 patient I'm talking. So the herd immunity is, when a lot of patients are infected, then a huge number of patients will develop immunity. But that is for the routine virus. But COVID-19 is dangerous because if it is infecting 20% patient or 15% patient population will die. This is a very good example which has published today. I have taken a photo how it works, how he herd immunity works. You can see no one is immunized. This is the blue one is people who are, who are red is infected. They infect a lot of people. Some, people. some of the population gets immunized because of their own antibodies. Contiguous disease spread throughout the same population. Red is those who are infected and most of the population get immunized, spread of contagious disease contained and yellow is people that means who are infected but they have enough immunity. They are surviving. But this is general diagram for non-COVID patient. But we are expecting that this will happen and this will happen and this will happen and we will have herd immunity. Stockholm is the city in Sweden where the Nobel Prize is given. I have gone and visited many times. You see, you get inspiration when you visit that place that you might get the Nobel Prize, which is very untrue. So, that's Stockholm. Stockholm has not done a lockdown, complete lockdown. Thinking, because they went with the philosophy that we will get herd immunity soon. I saw the picture day before yesterday. A lot of restaurants are already open. And they have still high mortality, but not that bad as France and Italy. So, then the French health minister, sorry, Swedish health minister came on TV. She said, no, we have done the lockdown because... The WHO guidelines are there that you should put the lockdown. Don't believe a one or two anecdotal th thought process that herd immunity will come soon if you don't, uh, if you allow people to mix up. That means you are mixing up, this person will infect other, he will get infected and after a while you will get immunity and when you will get immunity, you will be herd immunity, H-E-R-D, herd immunity and therefore you are safe. It's not true for COVID-19. 
So coming to the ventilator treatment, why I'm telling you ventilator, I always tell everybody how useful is ventilator. This is very important. Lot of people say, I'm going to speak in Hindi. अस्पताल गए वेंटिलेटर लगा दिया उन्होंने दूसरा आदमी कहता है बिल बढ़ाने के लिए लगा दिया लगता है तीसरा कहता है कि अरे जरूरत ही नहीं थी वेंटिलेटर लगाने के लगा दिया नाउ व्हाट कंट्री इज इवन आवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज सेड वी वांट टू हैव मोर वेंटिलेटर्स दिस इज हाउ द रिक्वायरमेंट इज लेट मी टेल यू देयर वाज आई डोंट वांट टू नेम एवरीबॉडी नो हिम वन ऑफ द सुपरस्टार ऑफ बॉलीवुड ही यूज्ड टू डू सम टेलीविजन प्रोग्राम एंड ही सेड द वेंटिलेटर्स आर नॉट गुड इनफ दे आर नॉट रिक्वायर्ड पीपल आर यूजिंग इट फॉर नो रीजन This is on the television channel when there somebody came up without naming him. I think everybody will understand who was this person. So he was used to do a lot of program. Satyamev Jayate. Now everybody will know. So okay, I want to tell you what is ventilator. Ventilator is a life-saving treatment. Life-saving. When it is used, it is used whenever you have a oxygenation disturbed to that extent that the person cannot breathe. If you don't put ventilator, he will die in few hours. If you have ventilator facility in the hospital, if you don't put it, it is again a criminal. If you don't have facility, then again it is a crime. Lot of district hospital in India, lot of hospital primary health centers in India, they do not, they are not equipped with ventilator therapy. Ventilator, there are two types of ventilation. One is oxygen, pressurized oxygen. Another is when you put a tube inside the windpipe and that gives a direct oxygen with a tidal volume about 500 ml, ml per minute or 600 ml per minute is a is a system which helps you to breathe. The person whose lungs are destroyed to that extent. that he cannot breathe and he will die within few hours if you would put ventilator that will it will help the ventilator will help recovery of the lungs it will help the recovery of the lungs you give time to the lung to recover and then you take out the ventilator ventilator are life saving now the world is realizing how important it is in italy what happened they are they were short of because so many people what admitted in the hospital and icus that they were short of ventilator Then the doctor used to think I should give ventilator to this COVID nineteen or other COVID nineteen. This COVID nineteen is nineteen year old. This COVID nineteen is eighty five year old. Okay, I will not. I will. I, this is this was very dangerous and very. I mean, this is very pity. They had to choose one ventilator and three patients, whom to give. Okay, he has twenty years. He's thirty five years. I'll give thirty twenty years person, thirty five years person, and I will skip let eighty five year old because he another few years to live. He will die, and that's why so many deaths happen. So I want to tell the whole family and fraternity and public: never curse a doctor who is putting a ventilator. It's for the life saving of your family member. Of course, if you want, you can. Uh, when the uh, but ventilator will not be the final solution. The whole the body has to come back. Till the time the body comes back, ventilator will take care of the body so that he does not get so much deoxygenated that he will die. So this is what ventilator is. Now our prime minister has ordered. India has got enough ventilator to fight the COVID-19. We have not reached that situation. That means, like Italy or or USA, in USA, more than two thousand, three thousand deaths are happening every day, every day, which is very, very dangerous. Coming to the healthcare workers, let me remind you: a lot of my friends, doctors in France and Italy and Europe have died. And not in a lot, and few are known to me, and few are not known to me. Healthcare workers. Are so important. That's why our honourable prime minister had one day of clapping at 5 p.m. I don't recall the day. What was the date? Uh, it was something like 20 or 24th of March. Doesn't matter. So the now we understand the importance because COVID-19 people who are with a fully PPE. You must have seen on the television. What is PPE? Personal protective equipment. So these equipments are so important. Because and so important because, but despite PPE, a lot of nurses and lot of doctors are falling prey and they are getting infected. So healthcare workers, I will tell you, Indian Council of Medical Research, lot of healthcare workers have not yet taken hydroxychloroquine for the fear and stigma created by media that it can be dangerous. It is cardiac toxic. I should tell you that dose is so little. It is not cardiac toxic. If your ECG is normal, please take hydroxychloroquine. It will reduce the virus load. I have taken myself. When I go on rounds in a poor hospital daily myself, and I ask nurses, "Have you taken?" No, no, not yet. I said, well, "Why are not take, following the guidelines of Indian Council of Medical Research? Take this medicine because this is the only medicine which is as of now approved for prevention. Except for we are doing social distancing, physical distancing, masks, and everything, but there is no medicine other than hydroxychloroquine which has been thought that it may reduce the virus load. It will not reduce the infection. If you don't take mask, you will be infected." Hydroxychloroquine will not do anything. The what hydroxychloroquine will do? It will reduce the virus load. That means even if you get infected, 
you will not become so serious to require ventilator. This is the advantage of taking hydroxychloroquine. That means hydroxychloroquine is not alternative to mask or social distancing or sanitization. I always tell people that keep sanitization on hand. I do it myself because I did it about half an hour back. I keep sanitizing my mouse, my mobile phones, my uh, the the rest of the hard surfaces and the, the table. So coming on to the uh, ventilator treatment, I've told you healthcare workers, role of China. I think this is important. I was reading, let me talk on the Facebook live, there's no harm. So a lot of people are talking that how, whether it is a natural virus or it is a lab created virus. A lot of theories are coming on television every day and the, and the TRP of the channels are increasing day by day. If they show something is dangerous. In fact, Mr. Donald Trump himself says it's China virus. He says it's not COVID-19, it's China virus. But one thing which I want to read for the people, Japan professor of physiology of medicine, Professor Dr. Husuko Honyo, created a sensation in front of media about two days back by saying that the coronavirus is not natural. If it is natural, it would not have adversely affected the entire world like this because as per nature, temperature is different in different countries. If it is natural, it would not have adversely affected only those countries where the, which has the same temperature as China. Instead, it is spreading in a country like Switzerland in the same way it is spreading in the desert areas. Whereas if it was natural, it would have spread in cold places but died in hot places. I have done 40 years of research on animals and viruses. He's a virologist himself. If it is not natural, it is manufactured and the virus is completely artificial. I have worked for four years in one laboratory of China. I'm fully acquainted with all, uh, with all the things which is happening and, uh, and all those lab technicians have died. Based on all my knowledge and research till date, I can say this is 100% confident the corona is not natural. If it, has, it has not come from bats. China has manufactured it. If what I am saying today is proved false, now or even after my death, the government can withdraw my Nobel Prize. He is a former Nobel laureate and he says he has worked in China. He says he has worked in China for four years in Wuhan. He says even if it is what, I, what he is saying today, if it is not confirmed, even after death, he says my Nobel Prize will be withdrawn. <laughs> so it's not, it is not for joke actually. This is a really serious matter. Bill Gates was yesterday telling that this is a third world war. But they were only everybody on one side. So I, I'm not going to do any controversy of like that. The, we have to take care. We have to work, first of all come out of it. What uh, this was interesting. Why I read was because it was an interest. I'm not saying that what I know is best. I don't know anything about the politics. But I think as a doctor, I say social distancing, mask, rumal, hanky, angocha, gamcha, hydroxychloroquine for healthcare workers is still the best way. And lockdown should continue a little more. This is what I feel. So coming on to one or last two topics for discussion, COVID and heart. This is very important, but I will not go into details of this because this is, I think, a lot of public is watching. So I have to skip a few slides, but I would like to tell you that all the heart patients should be more careful. And there is a slide which I shall show you that cardiac patients are more prone to die with COVID-19 as compared to normal patients. I think I will go straight to that slide. Uh, I think the slide is missing. Uh, yeah. This is an important slide. I think you can see it. Uh, this slide shows case fatality rate late in laboratory confirmed COVID-19 patients. Laboratory confirmed COVID-19. What does this mean? That means PCR test is positive. What is PCR test? I told you. The PCR test is the test which tells by confirmation. But in the beginning of my presentation, I told that PCR test negative can be there. That means you have a fever, you have a cough, PCR test which cost about 5,000 rupees. It is free, of course, in the government hospital. In the private hospitals, people who are non-affordable is free. It's a very complicated test. The throat swab, the secretion from the throat, that means respiratory secretions are taken, sent to the lab. The test comes, the antigen, I'm RNA. RNA, because they test the RNA. RNA and DNA, you know. DNA knows everybody. But RNA people, only biology students will know. It is tested the S gene RNA. And this is tested. The results come in 48 or 36 hours. This is important. Expensive, confirmatory, but it has a false negativity also. False negative test. That means you may be infected, but the test is normal today. It may turn out to be norm, abnormal or positive tomorrow. So what this is, a laboratory confirmed patient, COVID-19. 
you see the overall mortality. Overall mortality with this DAMA published February 24. Overall mortality is only 3% according to this study, which I feel is 5 to 7%. Those who are aged 70 to 80 years, they have 8% risk. 8% for the people who have age between 70 to 80. Age more than 80 years, 15% patient will die. 15% is a huge, huge mortality. And this is despite treatment. It is not that you are at home. You are being treated in the best of the hospital and ICU. Age more than 18 years with cardiovascular disease, that means with stroke or cardiovascular disease or those who patients who have got a heart attack or angina or angioplasty or post-bypass surgery. They have a 10% risk of dying with this disease. Diabetes, 7% risk. And hypertension, 6%. With cancer, 5%. So, as such, overall, the risk is more if you have a heart patient. That's why I'm telling you 10% risk of dying despite this. And uh, the, there is a paradox. The patient who has a lung disease, only 6% death. Although this, 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 this virus is affecting the lungs more than any part of the body, but they only have only 6% death. So I think I finally I conclude, I come back to the live session so that you can see me uh, with this. So overall, I told you, I come back to the first slide and then I will come back to the first slide where as of now the WHO figure says 29 lakhs, almost 30 lakhs patients are there all over the world with more than 20 lakhs death, 20, sorry, more than 2 lakhs death all over the world. So I am finishing this live video because now I have to come live. I have to finish the live video and come back to uh, to show my face, and then we will talk. So this is one uh, end live video and done, and then restart live video. Uh, go live like this. Yeah. So I think uh, if you please confirm that can you see me and we, I can take a few questions. I'm sitting in my office in Apollo Hospital. It is already 7.30 p.m. on 26 April Sunday. So I have to take my rounds also. But I think it is good. I think hope if you can call me on landline or can you confirm to me that whether you can see my face as such on live in India France group. Indian in Paris. Sorry, Indians in Paris group. Mr. Saurabh, Mr. Sahu. There is some time lag. Mm -hmm. Third time lag. 28 seconds to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So the question from one of the friends in Paris is that what about uh, physical distancing? So physical distance, initially it was social distancing, now recently we started using the word physical distancing, because it's not social distancing, social platform we are all working actually. Social distancing word came because you don't socialize, you should not socialize, you don't go to party. That is why it was known as social distancing. One meter is not enough. I was telling from the beginning that whenever people say one meter, I said one meter is hardly, is only, it is not, it's only 100 centimeter. So it is, uh, I think our hands or something like that. So from the beginning, I was saying two meters social distancing is important. But if you are wearing the mask together, both of the person are wearing the mask, then of course you can talk with a more nearby. So for example, when I see the patient, he is not two meters away because I have to see his blood pressure also. I am wearing a 95 mask. So if the mask will, sorry, the mask will help you to to actually help you to uh, reduce the social distancing. But whenever you are out in the market or wherever you go, the whole of the public transportation is not there. In India, we have made a system that drivers should sit in the front and you are sitting on the back. In fact, there was a legislation also that police were saying that if there are more, not more than two people in the car. So social distancing is actually very, very important. And um, uh, physical distancing, sorry. And two meters. Today, Prime Minister Man Ki Baat Ne Kano Ne Kaha, Do Gaj Zaruri Hai. Do Gaj Ki Dori has Zaruri. He makes sentences like that. Those are Duri has Zabse Zaruri. So this has to continue. I think this will, even I think the whole world will change. After even the COVID-19 lockdown is over, people will be scared to shake hands. <laughs> they will not know whether they are asymptomatic carrier. They will be scared of talking to people from close. 
they will be scared of going to parties and big parties and they will continue to wear masks even for a long time. So, uh, so uh, I am reading a very interesting presentation. Thank you so much for the information. This is Arohi Kalpore. She has mentioned Pawan Adaki saying, okay, Dr. Mayankar saying say, inbound flights, uh, start inbound flight. The flight, uh, I don't think it will be, it will take a long time. The government has to decide. Uh, Saurabh Chaudhary saying it was a very good presentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, Arohi saying, yes, we can see you. Uttam Singh Rawat have joined. They're all friends. Mr. Rawat, I have taken food at his restaurant many times in Paris. And I, now he's changed his place. I'll come back and take restaurant. He's, he says it's very near to Palais de Congrès. So it will be very useful for me. <laughs> because when you go out to Paris, you need Indian food, and which is not uh, served during the conferences in France. Uh, I, one more thing which I want to tell you, which I think I've missed about, is the asymptomatic carrier. Asymptomatic carrier is a reality today. And again, I should tell you that when I was talking, I have been talking on television for various days, in fact, from the beginning. So on 16, I remember the date, 17th of March, I made a point that patient who is not still coughing or sneezing or having fever, they can still be a carrier and therefore you have to be taking care with the mask every time. That is why I was telling that everybody should be on the, with the mask on 26 March, especially on television. I said, everybody who's going out should be with mask and people ignored me and people laughed at me. Because at that time, people never thought that asymptomatic patient that means today I don't have fever or he does not have fever. Uh, he can still be having the virus. The fever will come after five days, six days, because that is a uh, incubation period. And he can still be giving virus in the air while he's talking loud or well. So this is one thing which is uh, important. Asymptomatic carrier is a reality. The two things which I had thought at that time that was mask mandatory for everybody, not only in the hospital, whenever they come out, if not mask, you are covering your face with whatever cloth you have, angocha, burka, whatever, chunni for the girls, ladies. And second point which I said was, that means asymptomatic carrier is a real possibility and therefore one should be very, very careful. So uh, one gas is approximately three feet. As a gaj, yes, one gaj is three feet and therefore you have to be, uh, one, somebody is saying 1.82 meters. Two gaj or two meters doesn't make any difference. So there are a lot of comments for a, Anshul Deep Parmar is saying that 1.82 meters is two gas. Don't go by the specificity of gas. Gas is almost equivalent to one meter. One meter and one gas, there's only 10 centimeter difference. That means two meters is good enough to take. I worked with you as a French and Arabic medical interpreter at Apollo in the Hospital, IPL. Thanks for your presentation. Mr. Farhan, good, good afternoon and good evening, Mr. Farhan. So you were working in IPL in Apollo in as an Arabic medical interpreter. So he's there in Paris now. Okay, good, good, good to see you. And Farhan, you must be doing well. We'll talk on phone. So uh, plasma therapy seems working. How effective in ICU patients? Ashraf Khan, very important question. I have already explained. Plasma therapy is, there are only two effective treatments as of now. Ivermectin, which is not utilized in Indian, uh, sorry, in human. It's only utilized in vitro. Another is, of course, plasma therapy because you are injecting antibodies which are already produced inside the COVID-19 patient. And this antibody is likely to win over, over the uh, patient who has uh, already having the infection and is serious enough. So this is going to treat almost 80%. This is my guess, rough guess, not 100%. Because there was also a study which was published that of all the COVID-19 patients, only 30% 30, 30 patient may not have enough immunity. And uh, I got a call day before yesterday, yesterday, I think, day before yesterday, that I am COVID-19 patient. And very nice to have this gesture. And I want to donate my blood because it is not easy to find COVID-19 who have recovered, who will be ready to donate their blood. So I got a call and I sent, and then I spoke to the Delhi government person. He said, thank you, Vivek. I will please send me to, um, the, to them on Monday and we will take their blood and use it for the patient. work. So it is going to be very, very useful, the plasma therapy. Uh, uh, somebody is asking Manas Kapoor, Doctor, since last two days I have flight fever but no other symptom. Can it be COVID? Uh, yes or no, both. Because just a fever is not a symptom. If you have to have symptom, you have to have cough also. If you don't have cough, alone fever is, is, is not likely to be COVID and therefore you should not worry. 
but still continue because you have fever. For example, what is the protocol in our hospital? Let me tell you. Anybody who has fever, we will test for COVID-19. Anybody even without fever and getting hospitalized for any other reason, we test for COVID-19 because he can be asymptomatic. So if you have fever, you have to be a little careful, but you don't have cough, so you don't worry too much. If you continue to have fever and cough also, please do testing. Go to your nearby doctor hospital, get yourself referred for a COVID-19 and te test it. But don't worry, unless you approved COVID, but 80% patient will also have a, a serious problem will not happen. So don't worry. So only fever and headache, Manas Kapoor. But you have headache, but you don't have cough. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't, don't think that you are COVID unless you are approved. But again, for the hospital, the policy is everybody should be taken as COVID positive unless proved otherwise. Because in hospital, we have to admit the patient, our healthcare workers, we have to take care. Now the hospital policy in our hospital is, and that should be, I think, another hospital in France also, that we will only admit the patient once we have done the COVID-19 test. That was something like HIV. If you remember AIDS, AIDS came as a pandemic. There have been several pandemics in the century. The first pandemic was 1902 with Spanish flu. More than 6 crore population died. That was the worst pandemic ever. Then we had flu came, MERS came, SARS came, and then of course recently uh, HIV came. Now you have a, but still the HIV, still we don't have vaccine. The vaccine for HIV is still not there, despite so much of fund which is generated for this. And uh, only treatment now, with, uh, but uh, HIV is treatable. Now we have medicine which is treatable, treating the patients of HIV, and the HIV patients do not die now. So uh, I think. Uh, this is, we have to finish this or do we have any other question? Uh, yeah, I was telling about, what was the thing which I was telling? 